Guys, when you still see the people as property, as non-human or subhuman. So there are some developmental issues in that journey that we have to insist upon first step. Second step, we have put in there repatriation of all Africans who wishes to return home. All of us are stolen people. You have a duty to return stolen people from whence they came and facilitate their re-establishment in their communities. We are insisting upon these things. These things are not Western models of development discourse. We are seeking a comprehension of development that is rooted in our psychological and social realities as well as our economic circumstance. So we're doing our best not to fall into the process which you have described. The issue about um, Caribbean governments, on the one hand, supporting a reparatory justice movement, but on the other hand, subjecting themselves to a foreign policy aid strategy that subordinates their thinking, we fully understand that. And this is why we have said time and time again, the first step of any activist is to accurately read your reality. Unless you have a clear comprehension of your reality, you're going to be knocking your head into a wall everywhere you, every which way you turn. But because you are small, as many of our governments are, and weak and vulnerable, and because you have to accommodate to certain forces, it does not mean that you surrender your intellectual clarity. You must never surrender your intellectual clarity and the moral force of what you wish to say. Now, this is where I, I comment about the, the, the science of struggle. There's always the question you are faced with. What can the situation bear? You make your moral argument, you make your legal argument, you set up your rights. Next question is, what can the current situation before you, what can it bear? How can you move the ball down the court just a little further? Just a little further down the court. You're not going to get it from one end to the next. No, you, you have to move here and you, you know, how do you understand that science and what do you have to do? Our greatest political scientists and activists over the last 200 years have struggled with that, but they <laughs> understand the need for it. I will give you an example of an experience I had four years ago in Ghana. I was asked to give a lecture <coughs> on Ashanti, Ashanti rebellions in the Americas. And I'm worming my way through, and I'm in Kumasi among the Ashantis. I'm among the people whose history I'm speaking about in the Americas. And I came to the Burbese, the Burbese Rebellion of 1763, where the Ashantis in Burbese, what is now Guyana, a part of Guyana, <coughs> defeated the Dutch took control of the colony and established an Ashanti government in Burbese. Right? This was the first occasion that Africans and the Americas took possession, defeated a colonial power, defeated enslavers, took possession of a country, established a government, and proceeded to build freedom. Nine months they did that, nine months. Kofi, the leader, was in stool in the state of chair and became the Asantehini, or the king of Burbis. His military commander, Atta, was on his right hand as commander in chief of the armed forces. The Dutch government approached King Kofi and said, Burbis is a very large place. You cannot have it all, let us share it. You can have one part of it for your African kingdom, but you can give us the other part to maintain our slave, our slave plantation. 
but you have to share it. It's too huge. You can't have it all. King Kofi had a choice. An intellectual choice. An in, a deep intellectual choice of pragmatic politics. King Kofi said, let us negotiate. His military commander, Attar, says, we shall never negotiate with these white enslavers. It's war to the end. The king and his commander are now in possession of two different political and philosophical approaches. And guess what happened? They went to war among each other. The king and his commander could not agree on the future path, could not agree on the accurate scientific reading on the strategy. And the two forces, the king and his loyalists, the general and his loyalists, and they went to war. Three months of civil war between these two groups. The Dutch, on the other hand, signed a contract with the English, and the Dutch and the English form an alliance and invade and defeated them both. <laughs> now, I am speaking among the Ashanti in Ashanti land. And everyone is laughing, and I couldn't figure out why they were laughing. Because this is very serious political science. What I didn't realize that right there and then, 200 years later, the president of Ghana was also Kofi. And the elections were going on, and the leader of the opposition was Attar. <laughs> and Kofi and Attar were at it again. <laughs> 200 years later, Attar won again. And as you all know, the tragic thing, President Attar Mills won the elections and in a short time passed away. Now, there is a certain spirituality about that history which requires comprehension which I cannot understand. But the fact is, that we need a science of the reparations movement. We need some of your finest intellect to work out science and strategy to move us through the complexity of this global process we are trying to build. We do not have that science at the moment and we do not have a clear grasp of the strategies. And we are going forward. We are going forward not in the most scientific fashion, but we are going forward by the force of history and the force of morality. But we are not as scientific as we should be. The final thing I wish to comment upon in relation to the Garifuna in Central America. Genocide is rarely ever an event. Genocide is generally speaking a movement. It's a process where you render a people destabilized, unable to regroup intellectually, unable to regroup demographically, and you unleash forces against them to keep them on the back foot and to keep them diminished. And by being diminished, you reduce their numbers also. It's a process. And there's no doubt that in Central America, the Garifuna peoples are still up against those forces. There is no doubt about it. The reason why we have attached the two discourses, the discourse of indigenous genocide, the discourse of African enslavement, and we have also, by circumstances, had to attach to that the, indent the indentureship of the people of Asia who also were brought into a denigrating reality after slavery was abolished. And I all, in my own view of the history, our history is one play, one play in three acts. Act one, the genocide of the native peoples. Act two, slavery and genocide of the African peoples. Act three, the denigration of the Asian poor. Our history is written in those three stages and we have to see how they're all connected because the persons who are accumulating the wealth all they were doing is to change the ethnic form of the persons who they are exploiting. First the native, then the African, then the Asian. Wealth continues. 
We need to understand the science of partnership across ethnicity. <laughs> we also have to build that to build this movement. And many people have said, well, the Asian people should not be a part of this. But history has made them a part of it. It's not for us to choose, it's the history that has made them a part of it. We're all involved in this. The final thing is on the question of what to do with our global approach. We need a lot more focused conversations such as what we're having now so that we can truly comprehend our next steps. And as we imagine the next steps, we imagine the reactions to each step so that we can move with certainty. Reverend Wright is here, he's a distinguished clergyman and we know that when we are gathered together under the eyes of our priests and our moralists and our theologians that sometimes we can be elevated to the spiritual level and we don't get our feet grounded in political strategies and we need to move at both levels the moral, spiritual, intellectual force that is rooted in our history, but we also need to be ruthlessly scientific about the steps that we take one by one to get where we wish to go. And all of my colleagues, all of my colleagues have their own, their own intellectual grasp of this. They are all involved in different organizations in their various countries. They're all committed to the development of our peoples. They represent institutions with multiple strategies and manifestos. And that is what we have to learn. The art and the science of creating unity out of diversity. That is what we have to learn. I thank you. All right. And on that note, um, oh, that will conclude our morning session. Let's give all of our presenters and the a big round of applause, tremendous experience. I want to just make a few housekeeping, but forgive me for not, I and mean, you probably have already discovered this already, but I should have said this at the beginning, there are bathrooms, it's a very basic thing. So Jeremiah Wright, we don't have to worry about the spiritual being disconnected from the struggle on the ground because as of anybody who epitomizes the whole notion of liberation theology and the whole notion of making sure that thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, it is the Reverend Dr. Jeremiah Wright. So when, I want to quickly just uh, acknowledge uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, the Secretary General Emeritus of the Progressive National Baptist Convention, he, that, the Progressive National Baptist Convention and other entities were referenced last night. Reverend Dr. Tyrone Pitts is in the house. Would you please stand and be acknowledged? Reverend Dr. Tyrone Pitts. One of my most formidable intellectuals, one of my most formidable, formidable scholar activists who moves around the globe, but particularly around uh, African people of African descent, African descended peoples has joined us. Uh, he was for many years associated with the Smithsonian, but uh, that was just the way of getting the work done. Uh, but we just want to acknowledge the presence of James Early. James Early, many of you know him, James Early is in the house. We want to say that literature is by the dining room. There are two tables. Rather than flood everybody, but put your literature on the table. Then people can pick up what they want. The literature tables are right there. Those two big tables, you can carve out a little section and put your literature on the table. All right, we just want to get that down because people are just sort of sending literature out. The other thing, we want to make it sure that we as the organizers, we already, we're not passing around in a sign-in sheet. So if a sign-in sheet is being passed around, it's by somebody other than us. I just want to let that be known because if you're registered, you've already been signed in. And I only say that to be making sure that you want to be sure that you know who you're signing on with because we're not passing around the sign-in sheet. That's number second. Well, you really call that because all of us signed it, we thought it was from you. No, it's not because we already, when you registered, we have a sign-in sheet including your email addresses. So I'm just saying that for that reason because somebody is passing around a sign-in sheet 
And I just want to be clear that when you're signing on, it's not with the organizers because we already have that information. And then we can decide upon your request how that will be handled. I also wanted to say for all, I want to be clear about the schedule as we move to lunch. Yes. That tomorrow, tomorrow, the various other reparation commissions and nation and countries who are represented here will, will have their opportunity to be at this table to share your programs and your ideas. I want to make that very clear. We have two sessions tomorrow that are exclusively devoted to that. Dr. Uh, uh, Attorney Kamasong is going to be moderating those sessions, and uh, so I want to make that clear. So we have to sort of, David, uh, with Don and others work out if we got 20 groups, whether 10 and 10, we have to sort of administratively figure that out. But you'll have your opportunity to share your ideas tomorrow. The next thing is that for the National African American Reparations Commission, we're going to give you priority to get your lunch. You're going to go first. Because when you go first, I'm going to ask you to go to the fourth floor in this building, the fourth floor in this building to 4D01, where I will be positioned to open a conference room so we'll have an opportunity to share some ideas before this afternoon's session. So we're going to prioritize you getting your lunch first, and we'll be moving to 4D01, which is on the fourth, you know, go up the fourth level, and I'll, I'll make my way there to meet you there so that we can have our opportunity to do some sharing. Now, lunch is ready, but I want to organize the lunch in this way. I want people can just sort of stay in position. We're going to ask the National African American Commission folk to, I understand the lunch is ready, so you can make your way to the, to the uh, dining room. The dining room is here. No, no, no. In fact, um, Rick, Rick, I'm going to need some help with this because I'm going to have to go upstairs and so just, but, but you guys go get your lunch. You can make your way to lunch and then what we need you to do then is you can take the escalators on this side up to the fourth floor and we're going to have a, a little caucus, a little meeting prior to this afternoon session. So everybody, everybody else just sort of hold still for a minute, right? So now... Everybody at the table here, the CARICOM Commission, and those, those of you should line up behind and be prepared to move next, okay? And by the way, we're going to, we're, it's at 1.45, we're going to reconvene, I mean 12.45, we're going to reconvene at 1.45, reconvening at 1.45, 1.45, we're running late. All right, so all of the CARICOM folks here, you guys go ahead and, and get in line. But the observers, yes, just hold, hold in place. And then we're going to go with our international guests on either side, our international guests, and then everybody else will follow behind them. That's the order we want to take. I'm going to go upstairs to four deals. Four deals.